Mike is asking, your tests on the effect of charge voltage have been great. Have you tested the effect of different charge currents at the same const constant voltage settings on efficiency and charge time? Double the current, half the time, more losses. Well, welcome back to another video here from the off -cut garage. It's a cold Sunday morning and I would like to start this test today. It's a very interesting one. I've got only one problem. The battery is at 10 degrees 50 Fahrenheit. If you're still measuring Fahrenheit. The battery is a bit cold. Not sure if the temperature will affect this test. I could potentially cycle the battery a little bit now to uh, warm it up but then during the night it goes down to 10 degrees anyway again and the battery may cool down anyway so i probably leave it as it is but i measure the temperature when we start the testing well i want to do f five tests all in total i want to charge the battery on 5 10 20 30 and 40 amps but discharge every time on 20 amps and we will cycle between 2.8 volt and 3.5 volts. So we have a defined discharge current and then we compare the results later on. Which one is more efficient? Which one has the biggest losses? What is the efficiency for each charge current? So great question, Mike. Let's get started. Okay, I have now set the parameters here for our test. So we discharge the battery with five amps to 2.8 volts. And this is our baseline for every test discharging with 5 amps to 2.8 and then we start charging with different currents. So the first test will be with 5 amps up to 3.5 volts and then if the current goes under 5 amps we disconnect the charger so we are not absorbing at all. And then we discharge with 20 amps as per standard down to 2.8 volt and stop the testing and then we've got the result for the first test. All right let's get this underway. Well, this is a hundred, well, this is a 100 ampere hour battery. So charging with five amps will take 20 hours. It is now 10 o'clock. It should be ready by 6 a.m. tomorrow morning. And then we've got a 20 amp discharge. There's another five hours. So I will be 11 o'clock. I will be at work tomorrow morning then. Okay, I guess um, we'll see you again tonight. We have a quick look what's going on. Thanks, Mike, for this great suggestion of a long time testing. And yes, I'm back after 27 hours of charging the battery and then discharging as well. 27 hours. <laughs> so we charged with 5 amps. Oh, you know, this, this was just a second ago for you, but it's more than a day for me. <laughs> so I have, to, I have to recap this. So the interesting stuff is we have charged 109.34 ampere hours into the battery with 5 amps. And now we have discharged the battery with 20 amps and got 107.22 ampere hours out of it. The same range, 2.8 to 3.5 volts. So this is um, an efficiency of over 98%. I mean, look at the imbalance we have here. Yeah? 5 amps charging very slow and then 20 amps discharging very fast. And still 98% efficiency. That is insane. Okay, I'm really keen to see what the next test brings because now we are charging with 10 amps and then discharging with 20 amps again. So 20 amps discharging is our baseline to compare it to and just the charging speed will change. Number two, so we are not discharging with five amps until 2.8 and then we, we start the test basically. 10 amps, 3.5, 10 amps cut off, then 20 amps down to 2.8, okay. Interesting test. See, look at this voltage. It has risen again to over three volts from 2.8 in just a few um, minutes. Okay, let's start the second test. So this should take um, 10 amps to 100 ampere hours and then the same 15 hours. See you at 1 p.m. the next day. You don't have to wait 24 hours anymore. Start.
And we have now, and we have now finalized our second test. Charging with 10 amps, discharging with 20. And here's the curve. So obviously in this case, it takes double the time to charge than to discharge. And we will have a look at the results, which are, oh. Oh, that is surprising. So we have charged the battery with 107.85 amp hours and discharged with 107.36 amp hours. That is almost the same. Well, this would give us an efficiency of 99.5%. I have seen such efficiencies before, so I'm not sure how this fits into our whole testing situation. We will leave it like this. I'm not sure if I have to redo uh, one or another test to, to confirm the result. But um, let's leave it like this for the moment. 20. So this should take not longer than 10 hours, right? And okay. Okay, let's get started. See you in a few hours. All right, welcome back. Day number four or something. I don't know. Well, we have now finalized the 20 amp charging, 20 amp discharging test. 10 and a half hours it took can see the very symmetric graph here on the screen now. Uh, we have a quick look here in the cycle test tab. So we have used 106.29 with my calculator. So 106 ampere hours charged into the battery, 103 taken out. This would give us an efficiency of 97.1%. And also I Make sure the temperature is 16 degrees. Yeah, the battery cell stays around 13 to 17 degrees. So it's not changing too much. I don't think temperature is an issue here in this case. Settings. And again, we change step number two. And this time we want to charge with 30 amps. So this shouldn't take long. This should take long. This should take like three another five hours total eight nine hours in total until we see us again are you looking forward to it all right let's get this started see you in nine hours many hours later yep yeah, it's me again good morning day number oh, you can see the charge and discharge curve here of our 30 amp charging and 20 amp discharging test with the 100 amp per hour lithium iron phosphate battery. So we could charge in about three and a half hours and we discharged in about five and a half hours. So, and looking at the efficiency here, 106 ampere hours charged into the battery and 104 discharged, which makes it 98.5% efficient. So from what it looks like, they're all very close together. Everything is over 98% efficiency from what we can see so far. Okay, let's do the final test. It is the 40 amps charging test with 20 amps discharging. And then we have it. And then we will have a look at the overall results. And here again, we are modifying our step number two to 40 amps charging and then 40 amps cutoff as well. Click on OK and get this one started. Okay, this test should only take about seven, around seven hours, I would say, seven and a half hours. See you then. I can't believe we made it finally through all this testing. We have just finished the 40 amp charging and 20 amp discharging test here. Charging took only two and a half, two, two hours, 40 minutes around. Yeah, that's about two hours, 40 minutes. Well, amazing. Let's have a look at the result. Seven times one, oh, five. 99.2% efficiency again. Okay, guys, let me put all the data together here on the screen, and then I'll let you go because this was a five day test. Okay, see you in a minute. Man, what a great test. It took me only five days to do all these testing with these different charging currents in this battery. Guys, can we not come up with some shorter battery tests maybe? <laughs> no, that's all good. It takes what it takes, you know? We need, to, we need to know what's going on. I have put all the information now in this table here. So we will just have a quick look here. If you want to, I will link this document here with all the other documentation I have, all the graphs, 
all the data on my website as always the link is down below and as always you can just I, I apologize, the, the camera was empty, I had to switch cameras. Um, by the way, the, the camera is um, actually set up on a spat. That's an uncalibrated spat. I will have this after the video. <laughs> okay, back to the topic. Where was I? Oh yeah, okay, so this document and all the graphs and all the data can be downloaded from my website, the link is down below. And also, if you want to dig into the data of these tests or other tests, you can, you can download the EB Tester software for free. And then you can import these CSV files again, which you can download from my website. And you can hold down the right mouse button and it gives you all the details of the curve at any point of time. Just to mention it again. Okay, so here are the results of our five tests we have done. So we have charged the same 100 ampere hour lithium iron phosphate battery, 5 amps with 10 amps with 20, 30 and 40 amps. We have always discharged the battery with 20 amps. So we've got a baseline to compare to. And we can see here the charging time, of course, well, quite obvious, the charging time halves if we double the current. And here we can see the capacity for each test. And I was thinking about why was the capacity so high at the beginning with 5 amps? Well, I think 5 amps gives the battery enough time to absorb. So we're keeping the battery on a higher voltage for a longer period of time. It just took longer to reach the 3.5 volts. And therefore the battery had just a little bit longer time to absorb the energy. And that's why we can see a higher capacity when charging with lower currents. Despite the fact the battery cell was actually fairly cold at our first test. Then we have discharged the battery with 20 amps. And here in the last column you can see the efficiency between charging capacity and discharging capacity. And from what it looks like, there's not much difference, right? There's not much difference. It is always around the 98% efficiency we get, which is just amazing. It looks like it doesn't really matter if you charge your battery fast or slow. You almost always get the full capacity charged into your battery and you almost always get the same capacity out of your cell. I don't know exactly how this would look like if we would charge with 1C, but guys, we will find out very soon because I have ordered some smaller capacity cells just to do more cycling testing with the testers here. And then we can really charge these battery cells with 1C or even 2C. Well, and then we will run similar tests to this one here and see what the differences are when we charge with higher currents. I mean, for solar storage, you know, this is a 100 ampere hour battery. So charging and discharging with 20 amps here, this would be 0.2C, which is the standard charging and discharging current for this capacity. But then look, we made this test with 0.4C as well. And 0.4C with our big 280 ampere hours EV cell would mean a charging or discharging current of over 100 amps already. And I don't think this is a very common situation with our stationary solar setups we have with our batteries. So I think these 40 amps here, the 0.4C for this cell here is, is pretty much the maximum you would use in your, in your stationary solar setup, right? So I think these five tests here from 5 to 40 amps now, they are matching our, our solar setup um, very nicely. So looking at these results, I would say there's no benefit of charging slower or faster in a solar stationary setup here. Even if you charge these 280 ampere hour batteries with 100 amps, there, there's no downside in terms of efficiency. In, in the long run, maybe because you are putting a tiny bit more stress on the battery. But I mean, 100 amps coming from your solar, that is a lot of current. How often do you get that? Yeah, okay, I think this was a very nice test. Yeah, thank you again, Mike, for your request. And before I let you go, I just wanna share my mobile phone again with you here. So we are currently logged into the smart chunt, yeah? And we go to history. It measures the energy going in and out of the battery. And we have discharged my battery with 371 kilowatt hours. And we have charged it 
with 374.8 kilowatt hours. And if you do the math there, that is an efficiency of 99%. And all my mucking around with the light bulb setup, you know, when I try to discharge single cells because they were too high, you're taking energy out of the system, but this bypasses this merchant. So I found this quite amazing that we can have 99% efficiency from a 16S battery. A self-made do-it-yourself battery. Isn't that amazing? All right, guys, I think this is all for today for this test here. As always, guys, thank you so much for watching. Thanks for all your support here on the channel and all your, your beer donations here. Thank you so much. And I guess we shall see us again in one of the next videos coming out very soon here from the off-grid garage in Australia. We still have winter and it is cold. And I'm wearing a t-shirt. Need some warmer clothes with a logo on it, right? All right, um, see you then tomorrow again, right? Okay.